In my last video, I made this camera slider for the purpose of capturing some cool B-roll of my projects and general filming stuff, whatever that means. Now, the only problem with that project was when the slider actually moved, it vibrated a little bit. And instead of finding the actual problems of why it vibrates, I thought, why not make an anti-vibration now? I mean, how hard can it be, right? So I did a little searching, a little digging, you know, a little over here, a little over there. I looked at some professional anti-vibration mounts, some not very professional anti-vibration mounts. And I thought, you know what? I think I'm ready to give it a shot myself and maybe design a, a couple, you know, maybe one or two or Pretty quick mess. or even some more. So in total, I designed eight of them. Now, I'm not gonna show you each one because that would take forever. Uh, so here's a quick little summary of how that went. So before I show you what I designed, I thought I'd maybe talk about a little bit of anti-vibration mounts in and in themselves. I know this might get a little boring, but let's just get through it. In my situation, I have my camera, which I don't want to vibrate, and then I have my slider right over here that does vibrate. And the goal is to really just put something in between. This is what the gear that the camera's supposed to sit on looks like, and Basically, I gotta make something in between that to prevent it from vibrating. I try really to, to do this with uh, flexible filament, as you can see right here. And uh, flexible filament comes in all kinds of brands, and depending on what infill you give it or how thick your walls are, you can control the flexibility. And I try to make my designs kind of, you know, different concepts of how I can use the flexible filament's flexibility to absorb as much vibration as possible, yet also not make it unstable. What the fuck does that even mean? And uh, that's kind of how it went. So yeah, here's uh, here's what I made. So the first one I started off with was design one. Now, this one works off of a couple rings. The rings are kind of like the suspension in between the actual slider and the camera, and the rings absorb the vibration, and in theory, vibration's gone. That one worked okay-ish. So then I made uh, version two right over here. Now this one, the, there's less rings and the rings are actually screwed in and they were stationary. That one wasn't very stable. And was complete fucking garbage. So I made version four, which has six arms instead of four. And uh, it, it worked okay, it, it had issues just like most of the stuff I make. But uh, I decided to experiment more and I got on to this one right here, V5. Now, version 5 was so far my favorite because it was very simple and it worked the best. It just had four little rubber pieces and those rubber pieces absorbed all the vibration and it, it caught more vibration than any other of the sliders, which is a good thing. But I thought I would continue trying things out, so I went back to this one right here, version 2. And I made it a little bigger so it's a little more stable and I added more rings so there's more control. And not only did I change the actual mounts, I also played with what kind of rings I use. So I tried hollow rings, I tried fully solid rings, I tried semi-solid rings, I tried rings that move, rings that don't move, rings that can wiggle, rings that can't wiggle. Basically, lots and lots of rings. So I know I didn't show any of the mounts with the camera on top of them moving and actually preventing the vibration and the reason for that is because none of them actually prevent the vibration and uh, they are all uh, basically garbage. How hard can it be, right? So none of these really worked that well at all. Uh, the best one was, was this one right here, but the issue with these is that since they're kind of small, and all the flexible filament is mounted underneath the camera or the center of mass, even if it does absorb some of the vibration, it ends up swinging around. And that swing introduces a new problem, which basically defeats the purpose of having an anti-vibration mount in the first place. So I decided to make one more mount where the center of mass is controlled more around the center rather than the bottom. Uh, I could stick to the bottom, but then I would have to make it super large, and then that's, you know, a whole other thing. So I made one more anti-vibration mount, this guy right here. And this guy, as you can see, the little flexible filament contraptions are to the side of the camera, so the center of mass is uh, more controlled near its own level. This looks, in theory, like it would work really nicely, and it's got good flex in both positions. It doesn't have any swing or anything like that, uh, but sadly, it didn't work well at all. I'm also not going to show a video of this one, just trust me when I say it's basically like I didn't put anything on at all. 
It's, I could have mounted the camera straight to the gear and it would have looked the same. So I'm gonna give up on this one temporarily. Also, if you hear some weird noise in the background, that's just my 3D printer going buck wild on some hot plastic, so just uh, ignore that. So the, the idea that I had is, I have anti-vibration mounts where the flex fulfillment is underneath the center of mass. I have uh, anti-vibration mounts where it's at the center of the center of mass. But what I don't have is where it's above the center of mass. So I decided to design something maybe that holds it above the camera and maybe the mass of the camera will absorb some of the vibration. How can I better represent this? Okay, so let's pretend this tool of bag, I mean this baggie of tools, right, is the camp, no, 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 the anti -vi I think I just have a stroke. Let's pretend that the tools are the camera and the baggie is the mount, right? And technically if I shake the baggie around a little bit, obviously it wouldn't be shaking that much or vibrating that much in reality. The tools don't move that much. The camera doesn't move that much. Nice one. So in theory, their mass is pulling it down and it's sort of absorbing the vibration. And is it gonna swing around when moving? Most definitely. But if it absorbs the vibration at least a little bit, I'm gonna create some kind of anti-swing mechanism also. So let's go try this out. Let's go uh, design something up and uh, see how it works. finished printing all we got to do now is take them off the printer and assemble it So here is this guy fully assembled and uh, as you can see it's very interesting looking I mean it's got all these spokes and all that kind of looks like a birdcage web design or something like that but essentially the camera sits in here and it sort of absorbs the vibration it can't swing too far because it'll hit the outer outer cage but I also have this flexible filament contraption here to kind of absorb the up and down um, and yeah, it's most definitely going to swing around, but like I said before, if it absorbs some of the vibration, then uh, we're good to go. Right, so I'm going to stick the camera in here and put it on the slider and we'll see how, uh, see how this bad boy performs. So I have my anti-vibration on here mounted. As you can see, it's uh, got a wee bit of sway. Let's see how, uh, see how it performs. So yeah, it performs like shit. As you saw, it vibrates and also swings. So, <laughs> just another uh, good old waste of your time. Uh, at this point, I don't really know what I should try out because obviously shooting in the dark with the anti-vibration mounts isn't really working out. None of them really function that well. I mean, I learned obviously that anti-vibration mounts are a little bit more difficult than I thought to make, especially since there's no such a thing as a perfect anti-vibration mount. Like I've yet to find anyone that can make an anti-vibration mount that like absorbs 100% of the vibration all the time. It's just uh, seems unheard of, maybe I didn't look hard enough, who knows. 
but ooh, I'm not gonna give up just yet. I'm gonna go back to my slider and I'm gonna try to maybe find the source of the vibration or where it's possibly coming from and maybe that'll help me find a way to design a better anti-vibration mount or even tailor one of the existing ones like, like this one to, to kind of be more suited for that specific vibration that I might find. So yeah, let's see how this goes. So while I was looking at the slider, I realized that this gear on top looks kind of suspicious and once I played with it a little bit, it had this wobble. Meaning the vibration probably came from it wobbling. Also meaning I probably don't need an anti-vibration mount, I just need to replace the gear. culprit is this gear right here. Now this gear has a very skinny axle and for the size of the camera which is like as big as my head it's a little too skinny too weak it's not that stable. The axle wobbles inside the gear and it also wobbles inside the body of the slider inside this bearing right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and redesign this to fit a bigger bearing for a bigger axle and also redesign this to have a bigger axle. Hopefully when we put that together it solved the problem, it's stable, no more vibration and you know, sure I designed a, a bunch of anti-vibration mounts that I didn't need but uh, everybody makes mistakes, right? Anyways, uh, let's get to it and see if this solves the problem. So, we have the new redesigned body attached, the new gear attached, which doesn't move at all. It's got a really wide axle, as you saw previously. And now all we gotta do is test it out and see if uh, the vibration's gone.
Mother camera sliders, bro. This sucks. I'm on such a emotional roller coaster with this project, and it still vibrates, which uh, you know what that means. By the way guys, I'd like to apologize for a little bit of the audio inconsistency. I'm still a little new to audio and I just got a new mic in the middle of this video, so just bear with me and hopefully I don't uh, shred your ears too much. Now, to go back to the anti-vibration mounts. As you saw, the, the little gear thing didn't really work out and I still need to fix that problem. And since I already invested all this time in anti-vibration mounts, I'm gonna make a couple more, or at least that's what my plan was. Luckily though, the first thing that, a good thing that happened in this whole video really is, my first try, I actually made a pretty good anti-vibration mount. Or let me just say, as good as one can make at home with a 3D printer. So I made this guy right here. And as you can see, it's kind of a combination of uh, this starting one and this guy. So I use the center of mass idea of this one and the whole uh, suspension flexible part of this one. Now this isn't flexible filament. These guys are actually these little metal cables. The flexible properties of these cables are a little different than flexible filament because they seem to absorb the vibration much more without carrying the sway around. And uh, I tested it and it wasn't too bad. Now was the vibration just completely gone? No, of course not. But I think it's as good as I'm gonna get and I'm pretty satisfied with it. But let me stop talking and play the video and you guys can judge for yourselves. So I thought I'd also do another test, so I mounted it to a rally bike, which has a whole different type of vibration, and uh, ripped it all the way to 30,000 RPMs. Now I know it looks like it's vibrating a lot right now, but uh, just wait till you see what the camera recorded and you can judge for yourself. I'll do a little side-by-side -side comparison for you guys. So to answer the question, how hard is it to make an anti-vibration mount? I'd say it's pretty damn difficult considering that you need to account for a lot of things like the type of vibration, the weight of your object or the mass, the size of it, uh, what it's going to be sitting on, you know, it's ground floor. A lot of factors to factor in, not including the actual design of it and uh, considering all that, I think I did it all right-ish. I give myself a a C minus on this project if I had a self grade. Also, if you've watched the video up to this point, I'd just like to thank you for watching and I would appreciate it a lot if you liked and subscribed, if you liked the video, of course. If not, then uh, don't like and don't subscribe. Yeah.